A second coronal hole has been detected on the sun as Gilmore Space continues construction efforts at the Bowen Spaceport. Plus, NASA announces the Artemis II crew, our deep dive into the four-person team who will take humanity back to lunar orbit next year. Who are they and what's the Aussie connection? This is Trek Zone's Talkin' Science. This is the Bite Size Podcast, catching you up on the latest science and space headlines. NASA and the Canadian Space Agency have announced the four-person crew that will fly Artemis II to the moon and back next year. Commander Reid Wiseman and pilot Victor Glover will lead the mission, while Christina Hammock-Cook and Jeremy Hansen will serve as mission specialists. They've been chosen from dozens of candidates to be the first humans to fly Orion and the Space Launch System to lunar orbit. The 10-day flight, the second of two test flights before lunar landing, will aim to prove the life support systems and validate the capabilities and techniques of the humans tasked with living and working in deep space. NASA's Johnson Space Center Director Vanessa Weich said this mission paves the way for the expansion of human deep space exploration and presents new opportunities for scientific discoveries, commercial industry and academic partnerships and the Artemis generation. Well, let's meet the crew of Artemis II. Commander Reed Wiseman served as a flight engineer aboard the International Space Station for Expedition 41 in 2014. He's logged more than 165 days in space, including almost 13 hours as lead spacewalker during two EVAs. Prior to his assignment on Artemis II, Wiseman served as chief of the astronaut office from December 2020 until November 2022. Wiseman is also a U.S. Navy captain, and Artemis II will be his second space flight. Apollo, to me, changed the entire direction of our nation, and in many ways of the entire world, just achieving the truly unthinkable in the 1960s. Uh, Apollo inspired an entire planet. Captain Victor Glover will also experience his second space flight when he pilots Artemis II. And having served previously as pilot on Crew-1 with 168 days in space, he's suitably qualified. As a flight engineer aboard the space station for Expedition 64, he contributed to scientific investigations, technology demonstrations, and participated in four spacewalks. Glover is an F-A-18 pilot in the US Navy and a graduate of the US Air Force Test Pilot School. The pilot's role is to back up the commander as the second in command of the crew and also to understand the status of the vehicle and if need be to, to manually control the vehicle or make inputs to change the status of any vehicle systems. Christina Hammock-Cook will also be making her second flight into space. She served as flight engineer aboard the space station for expeditions 59, 60 and 61. Cook holds the record for the longest space flight by a woman with a total of 328 days in space and participated in the first all-female spacewalk back in 2019 with fellow astronaut Jessica Meir. Christina received a Bachelor of Science degrees in Electrical Engineering and Physics and a Master of Science in Electrical Engineering at North Carolina State University. When I first found out that I was assigned to Artemis II, my thoughts were disbelief, an immense sense of honor and responsibility, and readiness. I'm ready to try to make everyone proud and to really fulfill what this mission truly means to all humanity. Flying the Maple Leaf flag will be Colonel Jeremy Hansen. He'll be making his first flight to space. His rank has been earned from service to the Royal Canadian Air Force. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Space Science and a Master of Science in Physics from the Royal Military College of Canada with a research focus on wide field of view satellite tracking. He was one of two recruits selected by the Canadian Space Agency in 2009 through the third Canadian Astronaut Recruitment Campaign and has served as CAPCOM in Mission Control and in 2017 became the first Canadian to be entrusted with leading a NASA astronaut class. Finding out that I had, was being asked to fly on Artemis II was uh, a humbling experience for me. Um, something that I'm really, really excited about, passionate about. For me, it's a huge challenge. And so that was like a special moment for me when the president of the Canadian Space Agency called me and officially um, proclaimed to me that I would be flying on Artemis II. And then sharing that with my wife and three kids was also a very special moment for me, watching their excitement uh, as I pursue a, a dream of mine. 
And of course, because this is an Australian podcast, we have to know more about our contribution to this first crewed flight. Even before the robotic lunar rover, which is being developed in Perth, the Stalwart team at Canberra's Deep Space Communication Complex will be coordinating communication between Mission Control and Artemis II. To find out how preparations are going, Glenn Nagel is beaming in. Glenn, welcome back to Trackzone, mate. Busy times ahead there. Oh, it certainly is. It's been just in the last couple of weeks with the visits by the NASA leadership and uh, dealing with all of the uh, uh, different things happening with the Jet Propulsion Labs and missions upcoming, but especially with now the announcement for the Artemis 2 crew. And we're getting really excited here. And it's really putting a good focus on the work that we've been doing for the last couple of, well, years on uh, upgrades to the site. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're still about 18 months away from the potential launch of this second mission. But how in advance uh, do you plan, prepare and coordinate uh, with the Deep Space Communication Network as a whole? So we started doing planning work for the upgrades we need to do with the antennas probably about six years ago now. Uh, you need a lot of lead time. Uh, we're gonna, we've been adding new technologies to the antennas. Uh, increased bandwidths, higher bandwidths that we'll be using for the Artemis mission, uh, new encryption systems that we'll be putting in because we're going to be carrying, carrying human spaceflight data again, as we did in the Apollo days, uh, and uh, making sure that you know we can get on top of things uh, ahead of the game. So because there's a lot of delays with you know, the first launch of Artemis 1, uh, you know, we probably pushed back that uh, launch date by about 14 months before we got to the final launch last November. And, uh, yeah, that was good because it gave us, the, uh, in some ways, the additional time <laughs> to actually get those first upgrades done on one of our 34-metre antennas. And now we're in the process of doing all the others. You can catch my full chat with Glenn in this week's Talking Science interview. Jump onto the trek.zone slash TSIV050 or click the card now. Well, for the second time in a week, a coronal hole has been detected on the sun. Unusually, these holes have been forming closer to the sun's equator than is typically expected. It has been suggested that they could generate a blast of solar winds, which would produce auroras and have potential implications for our satellites towards the end of this week. Lastly this week, Gilmore Space have released a photo showing off the progress of their launch pad construction at the Bowen Orbital Spaceport. A 24 metre tall fluids tower will form part of the ground support infrastructure for the maiden flight of Eris later this year. In the social media post, Gilmore Space confirmed too that the launch is targeted for Q4 this year, a little later than they were hoping, but still on track for this year. Well, members get perks. Click join under every Trek Zone video here on YouTube to sign up and get early access and behind the scenes for less than a cup of coffee a month. For our podcast listeners, jump onto the trek.zone slash support. There are higher membership tiers as well. Get in on the ground floor for our next Star Trek fan film. Clicking thanks under Trek Zone's videos enables a one-time contribution while heading to the trek.zone slash PayPal is the most direct route into this podcast budget. Nothing fancy. Just my pure dedication to the network for a decade, the website for two. Do any of them today and have my eternal gratitude. Or simply continue watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting. Get that engagement up. YouTube loves it because it all works. I'm Matt Miller for Trexone. I'll see you in the comments. Let's chat about Artemis. Let's chat about Gilmore Space launching in Q4 and sunspots as well. Auroras, great time for those. Let's chat about it all in the comments on the YouTube video. 